This might have gone in by mistake. Yeah, go on, eh? Hi, my name's Sean Cordy, and this video is about how to play rock. Rocking, rocking chair. And turn! <laughs> Okay, so I get asked quite a lot about things like practice schedules or how much should someone practice or whatever or if I had a certain amount of time what would I practice and the answer for me is that kind of varies from person to person. Myself personally I've never really been someone that had like a regimented practice schedule or anything um, so I kind of just follow my interests whatever they are. So. 11 months ago it turns out that I did something with this Matteo Mancuso lick which went something like this and I don't think I've done anything with that for the last year or anything and I thought at the time there was something about it that made me want to do that sort of thing more often or do something with that and so I'm gonna do something with it now and show you how I think I'm gonna get that into my playing more but here's the kind of concept you you follow your interests for as long as you can remain focused on them so maybe I end up doing this for a week um, and then maybe it falls out of my subconscious but the point is that working on specific licks does specific things for your technique and stuff and even if you forget that you worked on that thing, I think it's still valid that you've done that piece of work. The other point is to maybe try and learn that thing in a slightly deeper way. So, you know, you might point out that it's in D minor. And so we're doing this thing based essentially on the pentatonic. So we start on the 12th fret. And we're doing a jump there. So instead of, we skip that C. So you could kind of break down and think about what is actually happening with the lick and maybe that will mean that it sticks in your subconscious for a little bit longer so D I'm noticing that it ends on this E I'm noticing it starts on the D I'm noticing that we've got that D minor arpeggio at the top I'm noticing that kind of descending pattern. So we got this pattern which descending is going from three notes per string to one note to two, three, one, two. So that kind of thing, I think it's really cool to just notice that kind of stuff. Then obviously the next logical thing you could do is do that in other keys and I talk about this quite a lot as it's something that I think I should have been doing when I was way younger. So we've got it in D minor here so maybe you think okay I'm going to do it in the next logical key so if we've got it in D minor you might jump it up a fifth so you could go around the circle of fifths you know D minor, A minor, E minor or whatever so to A minor we can start it on A and it will end on that. 7th degree of the scale or whatever. Okay, that's it in A minor. What about in E? Okay, and then B. And so on and so forth. And then by the time you've done that in a few different keys, Sloppy because it's a big stretch. You're going to start to see that kind of lick a little bit clearer in kind of each key. And also, you're learning kind of the, the way that it feels in different keys, like the stretch is going to be different depending on where you're playing it. So, down here. getting kind of the anatomy of the lick a, a bit different so 
Another thing that you could think about is moving it to different string sets. So good, so the camera just ran out of uh, battery, so now I've got to do the majority of this again. Anyway, so as I was saying, I think, so say we've got this in B major at the moment. <laughs> G sharp minor. Our starting note is on this D string, um, but what if we tried to move our starting note up to here on the 11th fret, another G sharp. Okay, then we'd have something that looks like this if I just do it slowly. And so we'd have that lick that we could play in two places there, fairly comfortably, so in B major or G sharp minor. Okay, and then up here again, G sharp. And it presents kind of new challenges because it's obviously on a different string set, set a different string set, so the shape of the lick is actually different to here. Um, and visually it looks a bit different but that lick then is all the more ingrained in your head because you've learned it in kind of two places so that might be a, a really good idea so we could try it in C sharp minor or down here uh, so a little bit tricky But you see what I mean, you're kind of taking that one lick that you learn and instead of just moving on to something else, you're spending more time with this one piece of information and moving it through your keys and allowing that to be the kind of way that you get more familiar with the fretboard and also get more familiar with the way that that particular lick feels under the fingers. So. So again, we start off here, we pay attention to what's happening, you know, we're starting on a D minor, our highest note is this A, we've got this uh, minor arpeggio in the middle of it, and then we think, okay, I could move that to A minor, for instance. Then we think, okay, what about if we take this lowest note and instead of having it start on the D string, we start on the A string. How would it look? And how would that feel to play? And what are the challenges that would come with that? And then the other thing that I think is really useful to practice is taking the, the, the shape of the lick, so we notice that shape of the lick. So we've got three notes when we're coming down, to one note on a string, to two, then three, and then one, to three. So three notes per string, one note per string, two, three, one, two. So you take that and you think, okay, I could move that in other directions into other box shapes. So if we're using the pentatonic scale mostly here, we could move to this shape here. So instead of here, go here and it's a different lick, but we're keeping that same kind of anatomy. And then so on. And again, that presents new issues and new opportunities as well. But I think that's a really solid way to kind of get even more out of that lick. So we've learned it not just in this one key, we can also play it in all of the other keys if we want to. But we can also play it in other positions.
and now we can also move it through the scale of whatever we're using. might find ones that are really difficult stretch wise so maybe you try and do that on a different string set so we go case it was a bit easier to play that starting from the A string but anyway you see the idea you're taking this one lick and maybe that's something that you can actually focus on for the entire week and remember that that was what you were practicing or remember where you got to with it and potentially that might be a little bit more easy to focus on and a little bit easier to remember than sort of 17 different things that you thought that you should practice or whatever so just taking that one lick and doing those kind of things with it might actually be more useful to you than thinking oh, I need to practice arpeggios for the day or for 15 minutes a day I need to practice scales for 15 minutes a day and then I need to try and learn the melodic minor um, maybe take one lick that is in the wheelhouse of what you're interested in doing and try and stretch that lick to as many different things as possible um, so like I showed you there, you can move it first of all through keys, then you could try moving it to starting from a different string set, then you could try moving it through positions, and in that way you've kind of given yourself loads and loads of work to do anyway. The other thing that I'm trying to do at the moment is experiment with just left hand only kind of playing to try and build up some extra kind of legato chops. So. So you could take that lick and play it left hand only. And that's sloppy and stuff because that presents different uh, things to get right and uh, you know the muting and all that, but left hand only presents. That's something that I'm, I'm spending a bit of time each day doing so I could also implement that and so if you're practicing alternate picking same kind of concert but just play but you see the idea take one lick and see how much mileage you can get out of it hopefully that's useful to one or two people I'll put the tab for all of these things that I showed you up on my Patreon. Um, so that would be this lick in each of the 12 keys. So then starting it from different strings. So we'll start it from the D string in all keys and then from the A string in all keys. And then after that, it's kind of up to you to figure out what else it was that you were thinking that you need to work on. Maybe it's just left hand only stuff or picking stuff or whatever you want but stick on a metronome and really focus on trying to nail that and also play it through with different backing tracks and different bits and pieces so that you're checking whether there are kind of blind spots and keys that you can't play it in instead of working on a hundred different licks in D minor or whatever why not take one lick and really get to know that lick properly uh, in all of the keys and I think that's potentially slightly more useful than focusing on too many things at once maybe so I'll catch you in another video soon cheers